reason we're gonna set right here is just because it comes into an intersection we've got three roads all coming in at once so so if a coyote comes down any of these roads he's gonna intersect and have to walk right past our set so uh, anytime you have road intersections uh, that's that's a good place to set uh, so we'll we'll find it somewhere right here uh, let's see, like this rock you can use something as simple and as little as this rock. Uh, a coyote don't like a lot of backing. Uh, a lot of backing will kind of sh shy away a coyote. Uh, it don't scare bobcats or anything like that. But a coyote, which is kind of what I'm targeting, uh, they like a smaller backing. So, so I'll use this right here as my backing and drill my dirt hole, and we'll we'll bed a trap right there in front of it. Drill my dirt hole first. Uh, that way all my dirt's kind of clean. You don't have to go back in the hole uh, after you, you get your trap set. But always run your dirt hole. Don't do it like this or like this. I always try to get as, as, as level with the, with the ground as I can. And the reason before that is so that the coyote don't walk up and, and, and can stand over the top of it and look down in your hole. You want them to be able to have to have to walk to the front of it and and look down the hole from the front side. Um, so and I always do it, you know, a good eight ten inches deep. That way they have to work hard to to get the bait out of the hole. Once we have our dirt hole, as you can see, kind of get you a shot looking down in it if you want to. As you can see, you, you've got to be standing in front of this hole to see down it. Uh, and that's what you want. So now we'll kind of just, I like to kind of just bed that dirt up around it from the side right there. Uh, Another thing, offset your trap. Uh, you don't want to set your trap right dead in front of the, the hole because when that when that coyote walks in here, you got to think about it. He's going to stand here just like this and smell. Uh, he's not going not gonna to step on it like that. So always offset your trap either to the right or to the left uh, an inch or so, just enough where, where you know that like a dog or a coyote or whatever, they're going to put either their right or left paw on the center pan of that trap. Let me get a trap and we'll bed one. All right, and this setup right here, uh, I run all MB550s with an offset jaw. Um, that offset jaw just helps keep from cutting them as bad. Um, and I have inline shock springs on my trap that keeps a, takes some of the shock out when they hit the end of the line. Make sure you have plenty of swivels in your trap so that it It'll swivel good. Uh, you want that coyote to be able to move and turn and not get binded up in any way. Um, so that's, that's an important factor there in your trapping is, is having, having good, good quality working products. And this is an earth anchor. Um, this is the way we stake them in the ground. So uh, I'll drive this anchor in the ground and, and when it, it'll drive in like this and once it gets pulled on, it, it can't go anywhere in the earth. All right, I'm going to make my trap bed. And on that trap bed, you want to be eight to 10 inches from your hole. So don't crowd your hole, kind of stay back a little bit because once again, when that coyote walks up, he's going he's gonna to keep his feet here and kind of stretch out with his nose and smell. He's not going to walk up and just plant his feet on either side of the hole. So kind of keep your trap back a little bit, in my opinion. 
and I'll kind of make a bowl, uh, just kind of a bowl out of my trap bed. That kind of gives my gives my chain and everything somewhere to sit. Uh, but once you get that bowl made, these are called Wolf Fang Earth Anchors. Uh, and this driver here, it just attaches to the end like that. We'll take, we'll drive it down. You want to drive it all the way to this quick link goes in the dirt. Kind of give your trap a tug to set that anchor. Now we're ready to bed our trap in the hole. And whenever I set my trap, that's called the dog of the trap. So anytime I, I set this trap in front of a dirt hole, I always put the dog at about a two o'clock angle compared to the hole. So if my hole's here, I wanna rotate my dog like that. And the reason being is because if you've got it straight on with your hole, when this trap fires, this lever is gonna pop up first. So that could hit the back of his foot and kick his foot out of that trap. But if he steps in it sideways like that, you've got him. Uh, so that's just a little tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that helps me. Um, all right, the most important rule of trapping is a good solid trap bed. You have to have that trap bedded solid. You don't want it to move. Uh, if, 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 it, if anything walks up here and steps on that trap, on a jaw or a lever, and uh, and, it, and it moves at all, then um, that coyote, that animal's gone. He won't be back for a while. So, so that's the number one rule: is bed your trap solid. Uh, if you think it's rule of thumb, if you think it's solid, make it a little more solid. You know, keep trying. So, uh, you can't overdo it. Um, but I'll take a little bit of this dry dirt and kind of sprinkle down under there just to have a little dryness, but. Uh, now you can take this this wetter dirt and kind of pack around the jaws and just bed that trap in real nice and solid alright uh, this is ground up mice um, and that's what I like to use just because in this area there's a lot of mice and uh, it, it's what works best for me here but uh, you don't need just a whole lot, uh, just, a, just a good amount. Um, and then make sure it gets in the very back of your hole. Um, I like to shove it all the way in the back of that hole so that way that, that dog has to work at it to get it out. He can't just walk up there easily and get it out. All right, once we get our bait down in the hole, I'll take a, what's called a lure. Uh, a gland lure uh, that's just a an attracting a long call lure um, and I'll take it and just take it all you don't need much just a pea size amount uh, and I'll run that down in the hole as well all the way to the back any dog would uh, when they smell somewhere another dog has already urinated they're going they're going to urinate on it too and they're going to mark their ter territory as well so same as a coyote, when he walks by here and sees that another dog has, say, buried that bait uh, and marked his territory, he's going to come up and investigate and try to try to use the bathroom on it too, you know. So I like to just take and shoot me a shot on my backing, maybe a little bit over here on the side, and, uh, and that's all it is to it. That's a finished set. That's, that's ready to catch. All right, guys, we got a, uh, just want to show you this set here. This is a flat set, what I like to call one of my flat sets. Uh, it's basically the same exact set as a dirt hole, just without the dirt hole. Um, right here, you see, I kind of just use this rock as backing. Um, I, I found a rock that was laying in the road, and I still bedded my trap exactly the same, the 8 to 10 inches away, like you would a dirt hole. Everything exactly the same as a dirt hole. And like I said, just instead of a dirt hole, just all we use here is lure and urine. 
I like to rub my lure along that rock, just on the face of it, pour my urine on the backing. And what that does is that makes that coyote walk up and mark his territory and either try to pee on it or he'll walk in from the front like a dirt hole and, and bury his nose under the rock. And when he does, we're hoping he'll put his foot right on the pad, on the, on the pan of the trap. So uh, that's a flat set. And there's a million different variations to a flat set. You can get creative. Uh, you can do walk through flat sets. You can do trench flat sets. Uh, uh, there, there's a million different ways to do it. So this is where you get to use your imagination. Uh, if you think that if you think you know something about your yard dog, this is a good spot to try it right here. All right, this right here is a what I call a pee post set. Uh, right now in in Mississippi, especially uh, the couch is in their mating season and their breeding season. Um, that usually runs through about January to about the end of March. But uh, right now, yes, dirt holes you can catch them on dirt holes, but it's a little slower on dirt holes right now. The, the males, they, they, they're not worried about bait. They're not worried about eating that much. They're worried about their girlfriends and, and traveling these roads with them. So the way to catch them right now, those males especially, is I like these pee post sets. Um, and, and I'll take a, a good solid stick and you want to basically the same thing as a dirt hole, still bury your trap, bed your trap eight to 10 inches from the post. But bury a stick good and solid. Uh, that way, when that coyote walks up, he can't nudge it or knock it over. Uh, I've got that stick probably eight inches, eight, 10 inches in the ground as well. So it's, it's good and solid. Uh, and what I'll do is, is I'll take and just smear some lure at the very bottom of the post and then soak the post in urine. Uh, and, and as you can see here for eye appeal, um, there was there was a little bit of scat laying around, some some bobcat or a coyote, whatever it is. I just set it right there for eye appeal so to to give them something to look at and something to make them a little more comfortable. You know, uh, they're very very visual animals, so therefore anything like that helps a lot with your set. Uh, but basically, it's it's real simple. Just lure on the bottom, uh, soak it down with urine. And the idea of it is, is that the coyote, when he's traveling down this road with that female, he's going to smell that, that, that urine on that post and he's going to want to mark his territory. So uh, when he hikes his leg and, and tries to, to urinate on that post, uh, hopefully we will get him. Um, and that's the idea behind the pee post set. Uh, it works, works real good this time of year, I think, especially in Mississippi. All right, this right here is kind of my what I call a trench walkthrough set, uh, walkthrough flat set, I guess it'd be. But uh, last night we caught a coyote right here and he made a big mound of dirt, just just tore up the catch circle really, really bad. And, uh, it would have been a lot of work to remake it. So uh, so what I decided to do is put this set in and, and what it is, is you wanna dig a trench uh, and it needs to be four foot long or so. Don't be shy, don't, don't don't make it short and uh, this, that, and other, but you only want it as wide as your trap is. Um, and you want it to be a good six, eight inches deep, uh, but bury, wall your dirt up on one side of your trench. And after you wall your dirt up on one side of your trench, you're gonna bed your trap dead in the middle of the trench. Uh, and you're gonna bed it the same as you would a dirt hole. Just make sure it's good and solid, uh, bedded good and solid. Um, and after you, you, you get your trap bedded, I punch three, three holes and that's gonna resemble uh, a mouse hole or, or whatever. Uh, and I put it directly in front of my trap. I don't offset this one. I put, put my trap directly behind my holes. Um, and, and I put a different bait and a different lure in each hole. You could do a bait in one and two different lures in the others or uh, three different lures if you want. Just use your imagination here. Um, but what this resembles, what this is going to do is the coyote, once again, is always going to put his foot on the lowest part. So he's not going to want to walk up here on the high side a lot. He's going to come around to this side and whatever direction he's coming from, he'll get down in this trench and walk this trench and try to claw at it from the side. So if he walks this trench, we've got him. But also, say he does come to the front here 
and tries to work it from the front we'll still have him so uh so either way this is this is a good set uh on a remake here like this it's something good to do we have a lot of scent around we have a have a lot of a lot of urine in the dirt so so the scent's definitely here uh and this is a good change up a good visual change up so hopefully if if one walks by it again tonight uh, we may may have some success again tonight so once again this is a walk through uh trench flat set is what i call it um and and i've been very successful on it so uh it, it works but that's that thank you lord no better sight right there out of here all right we got a uh we caught a coyote last night praise the lord uh what happened here is the night before last i had a regular dirt hole punched in and and i, I come back the next day and my trap was dug up what had happened is they had come in from the back side and was digging at my dirt hole from the back and uh and there was just tracks everywhere i mean it looked like three or four coyotes you know had done it so I come in here the next day and I changed it up. Uh, I took away the dirt hole and I did what's called a, a walk through flat set. Uh, and I'll show y'all that here in a minute. But uh, but that coyote, he worked it perfect it looked like. We got a good pad catch. Uh, so we're gonna, we gonna get him out of here. And, uh, we'll, we'll show you the remake next and how I do all that. Uh, but first when I go to get them out, I carry a roll of this black electrical tape and I'll just kind of get it ready, you know, and when I get him, uh, get him around the neck, I'll pin him down to the ground, kind of get his feet, and uh, I'll, I'll tie three legs up, and, and that's how I get him out of the trap. Get a close shot of him biting that thing, Tanner. Just make sure you tape his legs up real good. And uh, once we get him taped up so that he can't go nowhere, I'll take and pop him off right here. That coyote ain't hurt. I just cut his foot just a little bit, but he's not hurt at all. I'll take him now. That work? That work every time. And we have another turkey killer on the end of a chain. That's what you like to this see. This one's right a little there. more lively than this. That's what you like to see right there. Just a little more lively than the other one. There's no better feeling than pulling up and seeing that right there. No better feeling. That's what you want all day right there. I thought it was a sheep. How about that? Hi, right, Justin. He's yours. All right. Let's do it. The main thing, staying out of this catch circle right here. You don't want to try to stay out of that catch circle. Because that's where they'll get you. Got 
got a barker. Took me a minute, but I got him. <laughs> I mean, I could sell each of them, but it's just a lot easier for me to take and throw them in a pen at the house, you know? Yeah. Uh, but now that we got him like that, we can pop this off. Hey, man. Hey, man. We uh we set a set a dog proof here on this ditch. Uh, we was getting some tracks as you can see over here. We were getting some cone tracks and things. So uh, these dog proofs, man, they're great for just that. They're simple. They're easy, um, and you take out a lot of your nest predators with these dog proof traps. They're cheap. Um, just fill them up full of dog food, cat food, corn, whatever you think. Uh, if you set on sign, if you see coon tracks and you set on sign, then there, there, there's nothing to catching them. Uh, it, it's pretty simple. Um, it's fun to do. It's something you and your family, whole family, can get out and do. Uh, this possum here, this, this is going to save some turkey eggs. So uh, that's what the goal here is and the reason that we do it. So, uh, so like I said, any creek, any, any body of water is a, is a good place to catch coons. Um, possums we're on this farm here there's there's a lot of possums around so we'll take what we can get uh, everyone helps <laughs> 